Motorsports.com machine. And look at these guys just trying to fight their way through this treacherous whoop section. And you want to come in and you want to jump some, but then you just have to be lined up when you land. And we noticed Wyndham a few laps ago, as he jumped into the whoops, he really was on a wheel stand. You want to try to keep the bike level. Wyndham has caught the Toyota back to Yamaha, Jamie Millsaps, and the Joe Gibbs rider doing everything he can right now to hang on to fourth. But Kevin Wyndham's closing. Here he comes, looking inside on Millsaps. Can't get it done just yet. And he had to cut so low to stay out of those ruts right now. But just for Wyndham to even be riding, that hit that he took last week in Indianapolis when he clipped the back of Mike Gillespie's bike and went flying off right at the end of the race and landed basically, you know, on his rear. He, he, he didn't have any any real, you know, absorption with his legs or anything. Just such a hard hit. That's why his uh, back, low back and glutes and hamstrings and everything are just so stiff. And he may be out there doing a fine ride right now, but I tell you, he's going to be sore once again once this 20 laps is over. But he won't give up easily, Aaron. That he won't, you guys. What a performance he's doing so far. Stiff and sore from last weekend. He's been taking some anti-inflammatory massage. Also, he's been hooked up to an interferential stimulator to increase his circulation and blood flow. He's keeping his body from seizing up, trying to stay mobile, trying to stay nimble. And he's not going to lie, everything hurts. He just needs to power through tonight. And he's up to fourth now, Aaron, as he made the pass during your report. And Millsaps has to charge back. Yeah, she's had a knack for that tonight, huh? She's been good at it, yeah. If you, you know if Aaron's on, there's going to be a pass. Yep. You know, and in talking to Mills, or I should say, talking to Kevin Windham about that crash, Jeff, a week ago, he said he really thought he was going to get tossed off the bike in a different direction, which could have been even worse. Here's a look at it as we go back to Lucas Oil Stadium a week ago. Watch Windham on the 14 in red. He thought he was going to land backwards into that berm, yeah, which was, really could have hurt. Yeah, he was pretty frustrated right there. He had a great ride. He was coming from behind, and he was on the gas, looking at the top five, and that went down. So we go back to our leader here. But, you know, he had a 16-second lead in his heat race, did Ryan Villapoto. So far in this main event, and we're past halfway point, he's only been able to gap right by five, and that just happened recently. There you see Brayton back in the distance. Obviously the incredible season a year ago for Ryan Villapoto, winning literally everything there was to win in Supercross and Motocross competition, Jeff. Including the Monster Million, first time ever that was paid out. Yeah, that was. Did you see, and, did and you now, see how much cash that oh, was? And now here he is. Heading towards his second Monster Energy AMA Supercross FIM World Championship title. And who knows what's in store for him the rest of 2012. When do we start talking about what could Ryan Villapoto do to the AMA and Supercross record books? Well, I, I think you can talk about that right now. I mean, Villapoto has 21 main event wins, six this, this season. He's seventh all time. Okay, so, and when, you know, theoretically, his main championship contenders, or at least in the beginning of the championship, four of those riders went down. And, and, and fortunately for us fans, Ray and Bill Saps, Wyndham, these guys have stepped up. But these are the type of races that a rider like Bill Poto needs to win. And these, you know, as he makes his trek through his career, I feel that by the time he gets done, he's going to be inside of the top five all time. You never know if he's going to be able to pass up. Reed Stewart, Carmichael, and uh, McGrath, who has the all-time win record at 72 main event wins. Yeah, he has the opportunity here to rack up some wins this season before the year is out. He doesn't want to leave a lane on the table. And a guy that he's going to be racing against next year is watching with Aaron. He's watching and observing. Uh, just fresh off your fourth win of the season, Justin, but what do you think of the race that's taking place right now? Man, what an awesome race. You know, Bill Poto made a great pass on Brayton, and uh, Bill Poto's so strong this year on the bike, and uh, I just can't wait to get on a 450 and race with someone back now. But, you know, I got to try it out a little outdoors, but uh, Super Gross is a different story, and uh, the race with these guys would be awesome. I'm looking forward to it one day. Speaking of being in that caliber, do you think, personally, you have what it takes to go out and contend against those guys? Yeah, you know, I actually, I, I think I can do it. You know, I'm 
pretty too good on 250. I ride a 450 really well, and uh, I think I give them a run for their money. I try my best. He's on the sidelines watching, observing, soaking it all up, trying to take it all in. Hey, I love the confidence. I, I mean, I remember being on the line at, at one of the Supercross races in 92, and McGrath had won the main event, and he's like, hey, those those Supercross guys on the line, they better look out because I'm coming. We're like, yeah, right, there's a lot of competition here. His first year he won, what, eight or ten main events. So it's that type of confidence. I don't look at his hair against the confidence. And it, what it takes. Kevin Windham certainly has the confidence, and he just took third with a move on Weimer. Feet battered, and no problem for the Wiley veteran, Kevin Windham. Well, we'll take another look at that. And uh, you notice that it oh, oh, was the track. jumped right off the track. Over the berm he went and out of the ballpark. Trying to find a, a good spot to get in here. Make a left hand turn. There he goes. Well, he lost quite a bit of positions, and we'll take a look at what happens here. This is, uh, there was a rider down. That was Metcalf and oh, Gurky. Olesi yeah. was in there distracting him. He looks over at Gurky. Like, what do you think? Loses a position, then loses his con concentration, and consequently, he's lost a position and a bunch of time and a podium. This and here's where he goes off the track, right up and over the bird. And that can be really dangerous because as you try to turn back on, if you catch those tough blocks and they give away, nice piece of riding even yeah. even though it was a mistake yeah. the fact that he kept it up because once you hit the concrete it's like ice i mean josh grant here looking like he's uh, about to go lap down to winda so windham up to third looking at a podium tonight Jack. he's he's been fast in the first qualifying practice today windham was the fastest rider we were, he wasn't even sure if he was going to ride today. No. Consequently, he's been really fast. He's been strong. When he came out, took a look at the first practice, just kind of take a look at the track, and pretty much cruised it for the rest of the afternoon, get his qualifying time in, and then that was it. And we, and we had a conversation with Chad Reed earlier today, and he even alluded to Wyndham as being one of the best at the whoop sections when they get rutted like this. That he just has a knack and a talent that that not many riders have. And so on a night like tonight, when the track conditions get like this, Kevin really seems to excel. Got around Grant, who's running at 12. You know, and when we started tonight, brand new, these, the track design was a pretty, pretty easy track design. But what I kept saying is how the track conditions were gonna be in the soil and what's what's going on here and that's what's made this track so difficult and made the best riders in the world make a tremendous amount of mistakes. Villapoto, even when he's had a bobble, has been able to manage it, keep it under control, stay on top of his Kawasaki and keep marching forward. Well, you're looking at the best rider in the world. Bar none, he is, he is fit, he is strong, he has, in his career, he's been able to overcome injury and rebound and come back in ways that we didn't think would be possible even going into his first supercross title last year 2011 he came into that season off of an injury just just wanted to kind of get back into the groove he wins the opening round goes on to win the title just incredible run that he's on right now when you think about how badly broken he was with that leg injury in 2010 after the in race St. Louis. in st louis yep. And everything he had to fight through to rehab himself just to get back to competition, let alone to ride at the level he's performed at last year and now this year. It's incredible the dedication and determination he has had to come back and stand at the top of the sport and say, not only am I here to race, I'm the guy to beat. And the one thing is, is he's not afraid to do the work. He's got a lot of these great facets, a lot of these great qualities, but when it comes down to doing the hard work, he will do it. Now it's paying off. And it does again here tonight. Ryan Villapoto lights the candles here in Toronto. Another win in 2012 and the march towards a second.